Hi, and welcome to Conversations with Sophia, sponsored by the Via Jime Art House and Gallery. Today, we are delighted to be in my gallery, speaking with Kentisha Ward and Regina Smith from Grow Food Lab. This is a new initiative for the Bahamas, one that's going to revolutionize the way we do food and the way we procure food in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back as we delve into Grow Bahamas. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to the conversation. Again, today we are sitting with Regina Smith and Kentisha Ward from Grow Bahamas. It's a food lab, right, ladies and gentlemen? But before we get to Grow, I, I want to let you know that I have known this young lady for some 20 years. Now, that only means that I'm 25 and she is right around right 20. Did you right? Right. So we're not gonna we're not gonna get into all of that, but I've known Regina as a student at the University of the Bahamas, always an excellent student. So I, I, I was not even surprised to hear of this new venture of hers. I have, again, known her in another light with another company. That's Firehouse Spices, some of the best spices in the Bahamas right now, all done by this young lady. She is fire, and apparently this lady here is ice because she's made some popsicles. She's known for a popsicle Pop company. Stop. Yes. What's the name of it? Popstop. Popstop. So you have fire <laughs> and ice. So I'm in the gallery today, and I, I want to make an excuse because I've been getting some ribbing before we got into the show <laughs> that we have no wine on set today, and that's all my fault. Because we are in studio and we are actually in my gallery, I did not want to have any wine just in case some fell on the art and so forth. So I owe them a bottle of wine each next time I see them. All right, so let's get that off the table <laughs> first. Ladies, Grow is the latest agri-tech company in the Bahamas. Tell me about it and tell... What's the genesis of it? Because again, you've been doing spices, you've been doing popsicle, far away from this concept of agriculture and agri-tech and, and so on. So tell me a little bit about it. So it's not necessarily actually far away from the concept. It actually is the concept. Okay. So what we've done is... I learned something. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've merged the two. So we've merged the agricultural industry that we, that we get our supplies from along with the processing part of it. Yes. So what we're bringing right now to the Bahamas is the Bahamas' first FDA food regulated facility. So this allows for the production of goods and consumables in a, in a safer and, and more economical space. Mm -hmm. So now you have commercial grade equipment, you have supplies, you have food testing. So we are encompassing the entire ecosystem mm -hmm. to ensure that from farm to table, table yes. is covered. Wonderful. Where is this um, lab located? Uh, are you at liberty to say where it's located? Because I know that something like this has been bantered about and talked about mm -hmm. for as long as we, we you yes. know, we're in class together mm -hmm. saying that we needed this yes. kind of, of, of space mm -hmm. in the Bahamas. I've written the proposal. Others have written proposals to have this kind of, of facility available. And I'm so happy that you have it. Mm -hmm. Where is it located? And, and so that's one question. Second, is it accessible to people walking in off the street who may be selling tomatoes or mangoes or something like that. How does, tell me about it. Okay, so I'll let Regina answer the first part and then I'll Okay. Where is it located? In terms of location, <laughs> the location right now is undisclosed. So okay. We cannot name it. Okay. We are going through some signings and documentations and then once that's finalized, we will definitely have our coming soon sign posted and our social media pages are definitely vibrant and so you can always just tune in and just watch the process and watch our journey from start to finish. And that's when I'm going to be coming back to them with the wine. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Is anyone growing wine, by the way? So I could just... 
So there are persons right now that are in the industry and actually looking to make their own wines. Mm -hmm. And so Grow also provides that facility. Uh -huh. so there's also production assistance mm -hmm. and testing. So that's definitely one of the two most important features that this facility offers. So you don't have to figure it out on your own. There's mm -hmm. no more guessing game. There's no more testing that we both went through on our own and failing. Uh -huh. so now you have someone that is trained in wine production mm -hmm. or is trained in fermenting or fermentation mm -hmm. and they can assist you in that process. And then you also have the regulations, the testing and all those will be covered. And you said it's all FTA um, yes. regular. That's, so that's wonderful. That's definitely one of the important And I, I imagine that was quite a bit of a journey to get to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and also we'll be offering storage for those persons yes. who want to make wine yes. as well. Uh -huh. so the average producer, if you really do want to scale up your product, you're going to need adequate storage space, space as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you had asked a question before about access. Yes. One thing about Grow, everything about Grow is access. access. Okay. Being able to give access to opportunity for the big business mm -hmm. and also the small business. So we're interested in offering rental space, mm -hmm. rental kitchen space, equipment rental, storage space. For anybody who just needs to come in and experiment. So we always talk, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Because it, I, I'm just anxious to ask you about capacity because there's going to be, you know, this whole rush of people wanting yeah, to, yes. to get in and, oh, yeah. and I want this little space and I want this little space. So how are you handling capacity? Do you, will you have the capacity to handle more than 50 behemoths who want to come with different products? Mm -hmm to produce. So uh, what we do is we've already formatted a, a scheduling system uh -huh. whereas processes, farmers, uh, chefs can come and schedule different spaces within the facility. Okay. So we intend to have different designated spaces for different designated sectors in the industry. Right. So for example, we are talking about having a shared kitchen space. Mm -hmm. This will be hosted or this will be used by chefs or also caterers mm -hmm. or ghost kitchens. So we have persons, many persons who started at home restaurants, yes. at home food businesses. Mm -hmm. Now you can come to a regulated place where you could say I'm offering food in a certified space mm -hmm. where we know that our food is of quality goods as well. Correct. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come right back. But when we return, I want to ask these ladies about security and, 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 and some other questions surrounding this kind of business because there's a lot to talk about. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Trendy, upscale, eclectic. It's the Via Himea Art House and Gallery, located at number two Bay Street at the Point, Margaritaville Beach Resort. It's where vision meets creativity. The Via Himea Art House and Gallery is accessible to both local and international art enthusiasts wanting to purchase original fluid artworks. We also have a beautiful house and home product line designed and crafted by the artist herself. Contact us today at 242-603-0377 or visit our website at www.villagemellartshouse.com That's the Via Himea Art House and Gallery. So we, we left off at the break talking about security and I wanted to find out from you ladies. So the security has a number of layers. So as a small grower walking in off the, off the street, what is the process of, how do you process that person first of all? That's a bit about processing but it's still about, a little bit about security. How do you process someone walking in off the street? I have this box of, of, of um, tomatoes. I have a box of tamarind. I want to have, I want to do something with. How do you process that? So that's a processing question. Mm -hmm. The security side of it is, how do you um, assure me as the grower that, first of all, this is, what, this is in fact um, a facility that can be, I, you know, my things are safe. Mm -hmm. um, there is the um, idea of food security in terms of um, quality mm -hmm. and maintaining quality. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you um, assure me that, or even as the buyer, that once you would have processed, gone through 
this process and you would have taken in these small people or other farmers, the growers, etc. They would have gone through their processing, etc. That I have a quality product at the end of the day. So th there's, there's a couple layers a here. Question. It's a loaded <laughs> question, but you know, I can, you know, I'm going to ask. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. Please. So Either one of you can. I can start. Mm -hmm. you feel free to jump in whenever. Um, so one of the first things we talked about was coming in off the streets. Yeah. So that already poses a biohazard safety question for us or concern for us. Mm -hmm. And so there is a receiving department that is responsible for that. And so what we have also is the ability to now grade produce mm -hmm. that's coming into the facility. And so grade A and B are the ones that you usually see in the restaurants or procured by grocery stores. Right. But that grade C, which some farmers may tend to grow more, and it just means like a lower quality. Yeah. That's where the processing part of it is. Okay. So now we, we're eliminating or reducing that wastage problem that we mm. have. So now mm. those rotten onions or those mm. are hard too. They aren't, mm -hmm. aren't, aren't, right. they aren't shaped the same, they don't have as much red as, as the tomato mm -hmm. that you want to really consume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are now going to be your onion powder, the your tomato jelly. sauce, your onion jelly. Bridget Royal Hog. This sounds like a proposal we did. <laughs> but anyway, moving right along. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yeah, so um, so that's so that's how we are going to mitigate that that security challenge. Right. So there's definitely a receiving side of it mm -hmm. that's going to look at um, understanding the grade of the produce mm -hmm. and making sure that it's washed properly. And there is a receiving arm that is responsible for washing, sorting, and grading those those produce that come in. Excellent. Right. The other part of it that I that I wanted to find out about food security. Period. I mean, mm -hmm. how do how do I know one when I bring my you know I just pick these ten avocados off the tree mm -hmm. and who's going to secure that? Okay. Right. That's that's mm -hmm. low hanging fruit kind of a question. But in terms of once it gets into the facility, mm -hmm. how do you determine you know whether it's grade A, grade B, whatever you know. So I think once, so we already talked about the sorting part of it. Mm -hmm. So once it is sorted and you then take your good and say, hey, you know, tomorrow I want to make avocado smoothies. Um, so Teach may be able to talk more about storage part of it. But once you, you know, once that product comes in, mm -hmm. it moves into storage. Mm -hmm. And storage encompasses so much more than just placing your item there. Mm -hmm. And so she could definitely just speak more to that. So and even even to add on to that, speaking about food security, one of the biggest factors of growth is being uh, giving persons an access to an FDA regulated facility. So that's giving us certifications to know that this facility is run in certain ways, mm -hmm. to know that your product is produced at the standard of that will be accepted from the United States stores or anywhere throughout the US. So we've been working with consultants to be able to draft out our outline, also our floor plan, to make sure that we're FDA regulated and also we're following all the HACCP guidelines, GMP guidelines, and all the other guidelines that we would need to mass manufacture any product here in the Bahamas if it's needed to be exported as well. I'm glad you mentioned certification because of course that goes both ways. So do you have a team then that's going to come to me again as the small grow and said, you know, Sophia, them tomatoes that you grow in, they are not the specification. What can you do to assist that grower in making sure their product is of standard? Because I know for a fact, and, and this happens in with a lot of the um, produce that comes in from the Family Islands, for example, the hotels. We are all in the we were in the hotel the hospitality industry, and we know for a fact that the hospitality industry has um, rejected so much, tons and tons mm -hmm. of onions and tomatoes and sweet peppers, etc., because they are not at the standard that they want. Mm -hmm. They're not at the size. They're not, it's, it, it, yeah. they're nutritious, mm -hmm. they're homegrown, mm -hmm. they're locally grown, but they're just not appealing. Mm -hmm. And so do you have someone who can go, who will be able to go into the farms, the tons of them, uh, and say to the farmers, listen, here is how you grow yeah. this mm -hmm. in order for the consumer to be able to purchase it or the big companies. You know, there's always a thing about oh, the hotels don't purchase our stuff, yes. but right. they ref some, and some of them are flat out refused mm -hmm. 
assistance. Yeah. So how do you how are you going to mitigate that challenge? Because that's a challenge. The good thing with Grow being a food incubator, it gives us access to certain networks. Mm -hmm. So there are consultants around the Bahamas that actually, they consult on farms and they can go to your farm and they can tell you exactly what you may be missing. Maybe you may have too much sodium, sodium inside your soil. I know for places like Grand Bahama that may have had Hurricane Dorian, they have mm -hmm. too, much soil, too much salt in their soil. So certain crops they're not able to grow, but being able to work with Grow as a food incubator, we have this amazing network. Mm -hmm. Persons from all aspects of the food industry who can come and look at your farm and actually tell you what you need do you need more magnesium in your soil what do you need to make the best crop to be able to present to maybe the hotels maybe to schools wherever but part of part of that though is saying to that farmer I can assist you not only with telling me or oh, you have too much magnesium in your in your soil but do you have the funding mm -hmm. to be able you know because that's the other side of this coin being able to say, I'm, let, me, let me assist you. Mm -hmm. but let, let me help you to get to where you need. Because right. many of them perhaps do not have the funds to be able to grow it properly. Mm -hmm. Or to, to retail their soil or to um, you know, do that kind of thing. So is that an, a, an arm that you are getting into eventually, which is the funding aspect of it. So that you know, you can count on... 10 to 12 farmers because you would have already assisted them. They are tied to you. They're bonded to you to produce what the industry needs. So, Is that part of your definitely. process? Yes. Yeah. So um, one of the challenges, like you mentioned earlier, was the hotels or larger entities needing to buy from farmers or wanting to buy. Mm -hmm. So there is a desire from the tourism and, and hospitality industry to purchase from farmers. However, that procurement process is always a challenge. Yes. So it's very difficult dealing with 10, 12, 20 farmers mm -hmm. when I only want, you know, um, 10 pounds, 10 pounds of tomatoes, right. or 100 pounds of tomatoes, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. So what grow will serve as that, that incubator or that ecosystem or that hub that actually serves as that um, agent that will liaise with the farmers procure the quantity that is required, mm -hmm. and then distribute to the hotel. So now there's one agent, one parachuting system, one individual that needs to be paid out, one check, mm -hmm. and then we deal with the relationship with the farmers. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, if you are a farmer as a part of our program, you will receive training with along with your membership. So there are a lot of benefits that come along with working along with GROW mm -hmm. in terms of benefit, in terms of membership, um, training opportunities, and then also that's linked to the funding. Mm -hmm. So we've partnered with some universities internationally, mm -hmm. and we're looking to also explore our networks regionally. And so those those universities will be able to come in, do smaller training programs, small workshops, weekly workshops, and even weekend workshops, because we understand that persons need to have weekend access to this facility as well. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to make it as easy as possible for training for those that are interested mm -hmm. and then just to serve that ecosystem better. We're going to take another break, but when we return, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask these ladies about their relationship with Bamsey. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to The Conversation with Sophia. Uh, again, I'm here with Regina Smith and Kentisha Ward from GROW. We left off talking about your relationship with BAMSI. Now, I must put a plug in there. My, my daughter is now at BAMSI as a lecturer and a researcher, um, having um, gotten her master's degree in agricultural technology and leadership and so forth. So Hi. she's just started with BAMSI. And um, so far, it's going okay. Mm -hmm. But I asked you about Bamsey because the kinds of things that you are talking about, the incubator approach mm -hmm. to agriculture and, and, and sourcing of foods, etc., is what I thought Bamsey mm -hmm. is or was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I've never even been to Bamsey. So tell me about your relationship with them and, and if you're going to be using them to... Uh, assist you in, in some regards with what you are doing because I mean, there's room for both of you to exist. Exactly. Right, and so you, you ended perfectly. There is room for both of us to exist. And so, you know, we have been using BAMSI for the past what, four, four, four years now, three years? Yeah, four, no, four years, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, 
to to source our goods for our mm -hmm. source the produce for our businesses. Mm -hmm. So from watermelons, pumpkins, peppers, papaya, you name it, we bought it. Mm -hmm. And so they've always been an ally to us. And so we want to continue that relationship as we transfer and to grow. Mm -hmm. And so Bamsi, I mean, I think that relationship even strengthens even more now because we now have access to their students, to their network, to the professors. Mm -hmm. And you know, like your daughter, for instance, now has an opportunity to come, come to grow mm -hmm. in turn. We cross share, relationship build. And so there is definitely that opportunity to expand the network, expand their capacity, expand our capacity. Mm -hmm. And so we are a firm believer in more hands make light work. Very good. And so we are definitely open to that conversation, you know, and preparing that relationship. Wonderful. So uh, again, as a researcher, mm -hmm. um, I'm a researcher, she's a researcher with Bamsey. Is that part of um, your conversation as well, the whole education thrust? Yes. Because one of the things that I had conceptualized along with one of my colleagues um, a couple years ago, I, and I think I mentioned her name earlier, mm -hmm. Bridget Roll Hogg, one of the things we had conceptualized is also using a facility very much like what you have started as a research center so that the, the fruits, the vegetables, the kinds of things that we produce here can be researched, can be exactly. improved upon right. and, and so on. So right. is that part of your process as well? Yes, definitely. And so, we, you know, just take sour sauce, for instance. We always talk about the nutritional benefits, mm -hmm. and, and, um, but there's never really been a study done here. Um, that looks at the impact or the quality of our goods. Mm -hmm. And so at the lab, there's going to be that research opportunity. And we, I guess we can mention the University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And so they're definitely, their food and science lab is definitely on board and working with us, even in hydroponics, even in food security, even in um, the immediate response after hurricanes mm -hmm. or natural disasters. Mm -hmm. And so they're definitely willing to work alongside us. And so we're going to invite BAMSI and all of these ag agricultural partners along and, and actually work and grow together. Is the University of the Bahamas in play at all? Definitely. Oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Good. I think we can't talk about research unless we mention the university. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, uh, a third or fourth, so many pillars of this operation. <laughs> A third or fourth pillar of what we had conceptualized back in the day, Bridget and I, was well, two things, and, and one of them is bigger than the other. One is a food lab mm -hmm. where items that are tested, and, and I remember my days at university, there's, there was a testing area for food and that looked at nutritional content of, 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 of um, foods that mm -hmm. we grow. And of course, you can sell it to the public. Right. Okay, so I want to talk about that, ladies and gentlemen. I also want to talk about sustainability and the idea of reusing and, and, and the elimination of waste yeah. yes. of, of, of not just of products that we cannot consume and we can't sell, but what are you doing with it? And I, you spoke about it a little bit um, earlier, mm -hmm. but I want to delve in a little bit more about that, that concept of sustainability and um, composting and, and, and those kinds of things. Okay. So tell me if you're on, on with that. You do, okay. do some talking for me today. Okay. Let's go. No problem. <laughs> I guess we can start with the testing part. Yes. Um, and the testing part is, is, is we hope, Regina and I hold very dear to us. Because when it came to scaling our product, one of the main things that we needed for packaging mm -hmm. was nutritional facts. Yes. Good. So we scoured all over the island to find different locations that could give us the adequate amount of nutritional facts that would be required by the FDA mm -hmm. to place on our boxes so that in case we ever decide to scale and export, mm -hmm. we would have that information. Mm -hmm. We had to go to exporting our product to a different country to be able to get the required testing. And because I have a frozen product, that became a little bit more challenging. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, I had some colleagues, some former colleagues at the University of the Bahamas, Donna Williams, um, Chef Farrington, yeah, Chef and, and they, they did this around. kind of thing routinely mm -hmm. in their classes. So uh, you did not call on them or they could not provide that service for you? So I we've, don't... we've reached out to different persons or different organizations, I would say, I wouldn't call any names, to, mm -hmm. to find out exactly what equipment that they had that would be able to fulfill the FDA's new requirements. I see. Uh -huh. Vitamin D allotments, mm -hmm. cholesterol mm -hmm. allotments, 
the, so the FDA they, in, in 2020 they came out with new requirements for mm -hmm. nutrition mm -hmm. and farm mm -hmm. and we've heard some some organizations say they were bringing in some of the machinery mm -hmm. and they're not too sure when it's going to get in I see. and we also knew that we as an organization we were dependent on that mm -hmm. just so that we can make sure that our, our products could grow along with Bahamian products could mm -hmm. be grown and yeah, because one of the things that. and I know I asked you about this is uh, reusing and composting and all of it well i, I want to go back to the, this this thing about Bahamian products everybody produces something mm -hmm. and you have chefs all around everybody cooking and, and everybody thinks they they, they can chef, cook and they can they you know one, one of the things that this show um will be featuring is is food mm -hmm. and and as you know you may know or may not have known that i'm, I'm a food critic mm -hmm. and so i go around i test foods i i determine the the if it's edible quality, quality. Right. <laughs> I am concerned yes. about the quality of some of the foods that are being produced and packaged yes. locally, locally yes. around so, here so we'll grow address that you all have a mammoth task uh, definitely well, a very huge one especially <laughs> since the pandemic mm -hmm. with the increase in oh my goodness oh my goodness and so we are definitely trying to alleviate or mitigate what's happening now in terms of you know it, it just simple as foodborne diseases mm -hmm. you know we always say that you know that's a good food or it's good you know my stomach may run or whatever mm -hmm. But that may have been some some contaminated meal that you just consumed. Yes. And so there was no safeguard. You're not sure if they had running water, if they had hot water. Where is no, this food being prepared? It prepared? Where is it stored? stored? Exactly. Exactly. So mm -hmm. seafood as well. And so, you know, we're trying to move persons out of their homes into this space mm -hmm. and also keeping that cost of production down. Right. And it's actually making making it easier for you to scale up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for instance, with Firehouse, our capacity at home right now is maybe about 10 cases a week mm -hmm. on a good week. And when I say good, you know, I'm in the lab every day, mm -hmm. all day, mm -hmm. working in the, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But at Grow, or at the facility now, I'm able to do maybe 100 cases a Wonderful. day. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And so that's just because I have a commercial equipment. I have mm -hmm. access to now the jars, the packaging, and all the resources needed. Mm -hmm. So scalability is definitely easier. Mm -hmm. But that back to consuming, now... Now a consumer has confidence mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, a jar of pepper jelly, when I open it, doesn't have mold around the ring because yes. it's a can or seal properly or Correct. It's enough, um, you know, citric acid added to, to, the, to the jar itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so we are trying to, you know, assist individuals and, and allow them to understand that we're not taking or, or diminishing what you're doing in your home. So we're saying, hey, there's a better way to do it. There's a more sustainable way to do it. And come and let's, let's work and grow together in this space. Now you realize some of this is going to require legislation. Oh, definitely. I mean, because, so you know, I mean, who, 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 who are you two to tell me that my guava duff is not, you know, sealed properly? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there is that legal... Yeah side of it as well mm -hmm. and and the policy and making and and from a government's perspective mm -hmm. here is an entity that has been created to ensure that food produced and 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 so on is at the right temperature is it's it's the quality that we're looking for it's everything do you have the backing of the government Maybe that's too early to answer that. Right, and then I wanted, I wanted to also note that we are not saying that those home-baked businesses or those home-based businesses are not consumable products. Mm -hmm. There's a market for it and yeah. there's a place for it. Mm -hmm. So now if your goal is to export or to, to widen your distribution reach, then this is where growth steps in. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can, you know, your grandmother's um, guava duff recipe, for instance, you can still bake it, mm -hmm. you can still package it, and you can still sell it to whomever you want to sell it, but understand that there's a place and there's a market, and your market may be smaller, or your, your earnings may be smaller because you're not utilizing the resources that growth provides. Good. Right. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our final break, and, and when we come back on the, on the other side of the break, we are going to talk about the whole idea of reusability and, and sustainability and, and so forth. And then I want to ask also about export, the ability to export what is produced by GROW. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, so we're back in studio and Regina and Ken Tisha, 
we left off talking about the ability of grow to harness all of the and i don't want to call it waste because nothing is waste, waste when we're talking about agriculture and and so on everything can be used for another purpose mm -hmm. do you have as part of your plan an ability to take all of the um the uh refuse if you will from fruits vegetables yeah. kitchens etc and do some composting do some do some um what are you what are you doing as far as sustainability of of the of grow in that regard so we've already been and this is where the research comes in mm -hmm. this is why it's so important to have the research and to have to be able to work hand with work in hand with everybody else mm -hmm. um because we have the researchers who could come in and look at the bread food and say well this bread food could be processed in many different ways mm -hmm. you don't just need to have bread food fries we can now have gluten-free bread food flour exactly um so we also could have those researchers come and look at all the different all, all the most produce outputs here in the Bahamas mm -hmm. and find mm -hmm. ways where we can also process them in our facility so we could reduce that food waste issue yes. as well. Like Regina had said earlier, we have about, we produce about 11 million pounds of onions mm -hmm. every single year. Every and single a year. portion of them go to waste. waste. Absolutely. So we want to start mm -hmm. focusing on products like that that, mm -hmm. are, grown and, that are grown abundantly mm -hmm. here in the Bahamas. Yes. So that we could single down exactly what we need to. to so which brings me to my question of export. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Jamaica tons of times and they use everything and they everything that they use practically has a Jamaican label on it <laughs> who are you exporting to who so I'm coming to you again small little farmer um, and I'm excited because you're gonna tell me then that after you've you've worked my product I'm going to be able to ship my stuff off to who so, I mean, if export is your is your final goal, because a lot of individuals now just want to be able to feed feed the Bahamas. Yeah. Or take their product and see their product on the shelves and super value installments, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and but so, the money is an export. But the money is an export, it is, yes. Um, and that's what comes at a price. Yes. So what we are, you know, currently Flying House is exporting right now to the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, UK, I saw that. Canada. Yes. Mm -hmm. and Congratulations. So with our, thank you. With our network and the relationship that we built, we've already started marketing um, growth. And so we have we have the potential to export to those destinations, including Puerto Rico now. Mm -hmm. And so with you know with conversations that we're having, we're just making sure that each regional partner understands, hey, the Bahamas is here. We're going to be producing. We're going to be able to export, and we're going to make sure that Bahamians have an opportunity to see their products internationally in a in just like how you see Jamaican products everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're going to have now persons that love the Bahamas that you know have visited us before and now just want to taste the Bahamas you're now able to do it even easier wonderful and of course uh, the the biggest goal is the reduction of that, that huge um, yes. um food import, import bill, bill. Yes. that we yes. that are that we are grappling with right. every year and particularly during the hurricanes and and and, and because of this so big climate change um um, conversations mm -hmm. is going on right now that, that the right. prime minister is is speaking i think he spoke today mm -hmm. in in glasgow about climate change yes. and 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 soon soon we will not some of our islands will not be able to produce yes. anything so that's part of your that should be a part of your futuristic mm -hmm. conversation as well and not too far in the future either no. how do we begin to do some things differently because when people talk about agriculture all they can think about is tilling the soil and, and pothole farming. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's, that. Mm -hmm. so listen, when I tell my students, people are growing all kinds of things for the rooftops yes. In, yes. In, yes. In, in New York, in New York. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so, they're like, really? So yes. Just stay, just stay tuned and just watch and see what, you know, what comes out next. Listen, ladies, I, you know, I am, it's so refreshing to have such young people in the front of something like this and um i i'm excited and I'm, I'm i'm i want to congratulate you because it's it's an idea that is like i said it's been tossed around i wrote a couple of proposals on it wow. my sister wrote a couple of proposals listen to me <laughs> we we had a whole we even had drawings we had the whole setup draw and we submitted our proposal to the ministry of agriculture no, not the Ministry of Agriculture, rather, um, BAIC. BAIC. Okay. 
And that's the last we heard of it. Mm -hmm. and, but we were told at the time that the government was also thinking of doing something right. like this mm -hmm. with some foreign partners. Right. So I'm so happy to know that you guys are in the front of this. Mm -hmm. Now, what you've described is a lot of work. Tell me you have a team of people that's going to be, because one of the things that we, we, we all start businesses, mm -hmm. but, and I always tell students, and Regina, you might remember me saying this, if you're not in business to be in business, you will be out of business. Yes, yes. And so <laughs> if you are in business, and this is a business, mm -hmm. this is a fruitful, this is a, oh goodness. Mm -hmm. Do you have a team? Yeah, so yes, and I wanted to mention just, you know, before you started that, you know, about funding and, and access, um, you know, we we are partnered with Arawak X to put our company on the crowd. Excellent, platform, excellent. Which means that right I'm an now, investor. You guys can invest in Rural Bahamas as well. Yes. $16, home mm -hmm. only $16, $16 for one share. With your debit card, you don't need a big credit card, just right. $16. So easy bank card. That's two meals, that's two meals a day. Yeah. Because yeah. people eat $20 for breakfast. That's, you know, mm -hmm. three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, sixty dollars can get you all kinds of investment. Right. So, and this is the company that you want to invest yes. in, ladies and gentlemen. Is going somewhere. All of us are going to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. The country, the government, the I can you think of all of the islands and all the people that's going to be involved in this. So this is the company that you want to invest in. Yes. Mm -hmm. So parting words for me. Mm -hmm. What would you what would you say to the audience? I know you said a lot. You know, thank you to our advisory board. Um, you guys can go check out our website. We have some amazing women on our team. She didn't ask um, me. I don't understand. This is so Moving cool. along. We have space <laughs> 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 But, you know, thank you to, um, you know, our advisory board and our supporters, our team members that work alongside us in the background, you know, our marketing team. They're awesome ladies as well. Um, and so, you know, and even to our future investors, you know, this is an opportunity to grow and connect with us. And we're reachable, we're accessible, and we're here to work and serve, you know, serve you as well. And so let's just grow together. Yeah. Last words. And my last words, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you most of all to our supporters. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important to see young behemoths also. In and the female. And yes. female. Hello. Definitely. Hello. And that's another thing about our advisory board. Our advisory board is, is filled with strong, powerful women mm -hmm. who backed us from very, the very first start from day one. So I'd like to say thank you to our advisory board. Also our supporters. Also to the chefs. The chefs. Yes, the farmer that grows. The processors. the processors that produce. The chefs, the chefs that create and the distributors that distribute and most importantly the behemoths that consume we'd like to say thank you and most importantly invest and grow it has been a delight speaking with regina like i said i've known regina for the better part of her uh, business life and um, i was one of her first customers with firehouse firehouse spices and so i'm i'm so happy to see where you have grown with grow and I'm looking forward to um, participating with you as a, uh, an investor, as a consumer, as an advisor. Yes. I want to thank you so much for coming on the conversations with me in my gallery. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you ladies. Yes. <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen.